What is the mathematical secret of perfect comedy timing? I'm glad you asked me that because I was the person who, with my comedy science partner, Dr. Helen Pilcher, came up with the formula for the perfect joke. Let me just talk you through it. So the formula is that you can derive x, the funniness of a joke, from fl plus n to the ouch all over p, where p is the total number of puns in the joke. Obviously, the more puns, the less funny. n is the number of times somebody in the joke falls over to the power of ouch, which is how painful it is. And that can be physical or social pain. And fl is the comic moment of the joke, as engineers will recognise that's a rotational force derived by multiplying f, the funniness of the punchline, by l, the length of the build-up. This is the same principle as a lever or, or a seesaw. If you imagine a seesaw with a large child sitting close to the middle of the seesaw, you can balance that large child by putting a small child a long way away from the pivot. And in the same way, you can compensate for a punchline not being very funny by giving it a longer build-up. So let's test that on a real joke. Why should you never tell a statistician he was average? Because it's mean. As we can see, that contains a pun. Nobody falls over. It's a very short build-up and the punchline is not very funny. So all in all, it scores very low using our joke formula. Now, critics have said that the formula is rather crude. Some pointed out that in theory, using this formula, if there were no puns, a joke could be infinitely funny. And obviously, if I had a real formula for writing an infinitely funny joke, you'd be filming this from the back of a very large stadium. And you aren't. Some critics even suggested the formula was so crude, it was as if it had been thrown together by a mathematician and a brain scientist to publicise a comedy show they were doing. Or publicise, even. Uh, I couldn't comment on that. Uh, but no matter how, how cruel these criticisms are, it has to be admitted that it is quite a crude formula for something as subtle as comic timing. So let's see, how could we use mathematical modelling to find perfect comedy timing? Well, the obvious thing to do is to tell the same joke with different timing and, uh, and plot the maximum audience laughter. And then by having a graph which plotted audience laughter against the time of delivery of the punchline, we could see where the optimum delivery was uh, and plot it back and find out t, the optimum timing. Uh, but of course, there are complications to that. The first one is that you might get more than one peak. For example, if you told a joke about a dog falling downstairs, which is bound to be funny, then you might find that if you told the same joke again, but with three dogs, where the first two dogs don't fall downstairs, and the third one does, then actually you got a bigger peak by having a longer build-up. So there might be more than one peak and you might have to work out which of those is your optimum timing. Then again, there might be another variable. Suppose your audience is getting progressively more drunk as the evening goes on. The timing that was optimum at the beginning of the evening when they had their wits about them might be different to the timing at the end of the evening when they're very drunk and a bit slow on the uptake. So you might have to plot a whole other axis where you've got time here, audience laughter here, and audience drunkenness this way. Or then again, there might be another variable. For example, the proportion of mathematicians in an audience. Suppose you had a variable proportion of mathematicians in the audience, and you told them a joke like, uh, I don't know, three prime numbers walk into a bar, and an even number walks out. If the audience was full of mathematicians, they'd find that really funny, really, really funny. If there were no mathematicians at all, they probably wouldn't find it very funny at all. And according to the proportion of mathematicians, it might vary. So we're already up to three variables, uh, and that's leaving out all the other things. In short, I think you can see that the problem of modelling optimum comic timing mathematically is very complicated. It may even be too complicated. It may even be that the question of perfect comic timing is... Ouch. Anyway, subscribe.